Welcome back. This is Tom, and this is Tom's Ray Room Show. And this is my <laughs> kind of crude setup for testing some 18650 batteries. And I think we had a battery failure and we had a test tester failure. I, I'm not very happy with my testing methods. Just not very good. And I, I'll explain what I mean. Now, first thing I ran into is I was going to use this little guy here to hold the batteries to test. And the reason I needed to use something like that was this little tester um, is for testing these power packs, USB power packs. So I needed to be able to plug it, that tester into something. So I used this, or was going to use this. There's a little circuit in here that takes the these 3.7 volt batteries and turns it into 5 volts on the output, which is your typical USB voltage. Well, the first problem I ran into is, and I'll just, this one's charged again. I'll take this out of the charger. These uh, Nikkor batteries are a little larger. Now you saw from the previous show I did on this type of testing uh, where that gentleman has a website and he's done a ton of testing and he's of course done it much more professional than me. And one of the things he did is he measured the battery sizes and they varied from um, battery type to battery type or should I say battery manufacturer to battery, battery manufacturer. Well, these ones, these ones, hmm, I don't know if that's good English. These are a little taller, just a little bit taller than these ultrafires. This is a gray one, and then I've been testing a bunch of blue ones. So what I happened is I could not get it to fit in this case. And I have several other cases similar to this one, which I'll show you in a few minutes, that are the basic same construction. You know, this is this is very cheaply made, so it's just not oversized so that I can get larger batteries in it. So I had to abandon that idea. So I started testing, looking for everything I could to be able to house these batteries and have the USB interface for my tester. So I tried this one, which holds the same concept, except it holds five batteries. And again, this larger battery would not fit. The uh, ultrafires fit fine, no problem. But this one was just a little too large. It would not fit. So luckily, this one, this contraption, gave me some easy contact points that I could use some test leads and use this holder here, single battery holder here, and that one will just hold this oversized battery. And it's a really tight squeeze and I have to kind of bang it in to get it go in. And I probably, if I do too many more tests with this size battery, I'll probably break it because it's cheap plastic. So this is my contraption. And I'm not very proud of it, to say the least. And the thing is, I'm not testing the batteries at their voltage, their design voltage, which is 3.7 volts. I'm using the battery, <coughs> excuse me, as a source for this power pack device which has a converter board and then a USB port, which I can plug my analyzer in to give me a reading of capacity. And then that plugs to this load here, this variable load. So, oh boy, I just, I, I, I'm, I don't, I'm not, I really didn't want to do this video because this is so poor. Anyway, so I do have some results. I, I've kind of gotten to the point now I'm going to give up, especially after seeing that website, which has tons of information, and the guy, gentleman, excuse me, the gentleman 
did a very professional job of testing compared to my crude setup here. So anyway, the testing is, whoops, I just kicked the camera. I always have to kick the camera at least once during a video. Um, here's some preliminary results. The testing is still going on. I'll probably do a few more tests. Um, like I wanted to test this gray ultra fire. Actually, this is not an ultra fire. All it says is HBK. That's all it says on there. It doesn't have any capacity written on it. That's probably a smart thing. So we're going to see what it does, but it'll be later testing. Um, what was I saying? Oh, well, maybe I'm, I got a reading coming up. I take, I'm right now, and I've varied it, but right now I'm taking readings every 10 minutes, or 15 minutes. Let me take a reading, so the time is 8.56. And I've got 986 amp hours. Okay, um, and another thing I, I found out that it, using a load of 3.34 amps, which the reason that number was selected, I was trying to get 0.35, and the tuning on this load is a little touchy, so I just settled for 3.4. And then I'm doing testing now using a little heavier load, I was hoping to get 0.35. 5 amps, but I was only able to tune it to 0.48, and I said, okay, that's close enough. So, those are the two tests I've been doing. Now, let's look at the preliminary results, keeping in mind, as you can see from my test setup, it's it's poor. <laughs> I just, I give it a grade D minus. Oh, it's poor. Um, but what I was saying a few minutes ago is, because of the setup, I'm not really testing the batteries and checking them, checking the output at 3.7 volts. I'm going through this conver up converter and through this analyzer and load. And so I'm not really interested in the absolute value compared to the rated value because I'm not testing it properly. <laughs> That's an understatement. So anyway, let's just go over the results real quick that I have so far. So the, let me see if I can get this up with a camera. Nah, forget it. I can't get it focused in. You just have to trust me. Okay, with the, I call it Nikkor 1 and Nikkor 2, um, I got 1184 milliamp hours for Nikkor 1 and 13.08 for NICOR 2 with a load of 0.34 amps. And uh, that testing lasted over two hours. It took over two hours, about two and a half hours in both cases for it to deplete down to where it shut off. Now, the other problem I have with my crude setup is this measuring device depends on the output of the battery and, and up, con, up converter at this point. So once the voltage level goes with, oh, oh there's my temperature station telling me. The uh, voltage is dropping off rapidly now, and I'm going to write a number down because it's going to shut down. And I got up to 1,006. And it's nine o'clock. So this uh, this test is basically over because it's going to shut down. As a matter of fact, I'm going to unplug it. There we go. Um, and what typically I've seen is that the voltage will hold at about five volts or a little over five volts for a long period of time, and then it'll drop off rapidly. And the problem I have is I have to come in here and make sure I take readings periodically or I lose that last reading because when the battery, uh, when the output of this up converter drops down to a certain voltage, this thing shuts off and you lose the data. It's gone. And that's what happened to me 
on testing the initial ultra fires. So let's go back to that. Well, I was telling you that the NICORs were doing, they're doing about 1.2 to 1.3 amp hours. Amp hours. So not bad, not bad at all. Um, again, I'm not going to try to compare that to the rating of 2.3 on these because the test condition is just not the same. The ultra fires, the first two I tested, they failed, and I say failed, they dropped out almost immediately within 15 minutes. So I didn't get many recordings because, as I said, once this gets down to a certain voltage, this thing shuts off, your data is gone. Um, so I went back and I tried those a couple of times. And they did the same thing. So I thought, well, those were a pair that came together with a charger. Maybe the charger damaged them. So I got some more of the Ultrafire Blues, which are rated at 3,000 milliamp hours. And I tested two more. And I, I watched it so that I was watching it every 10 minutes. And so I could catch that last reading. And what I got on one of them, I only got 182 milliamp hours. Two tenths of a milliamp hour. Pretty low. The other one I got 431 milliamp hours. And those two tests were with a load of 0.34 amps. That was the load. They, they did pretty terrible. And like I say, the first two, they, I didn't even, it didn't even last for 15 minutes and I lost the data. The, um, the other two tests I did, number three and number four, they lasted about an hour and a half, about an hour and a half. So they held in there, but they just, they didn't uh, supply much uh, capacity. They didn't have much capacity. Now, I've got two more, but I haven't tested them. Plus, I have this gray that I haven't tested. So... That's kind of what I've got. It, it showed that the NICOR, which are much more expensive, they're basically two times the price of the Ultrafire. Um, they did much, much better. And uh, I would, in the future, I'm not going to use the Ultrafires. I'm going to use a name brand like the NICOR. Some people had suggested Panasonic. The other thing that a lot of people responded to my first video was these ultra fires there's a bazillion of them and 75 percent of them are fakes they're not really ultra fires which these could be and um, there's no easy way to tell because based on that website with that extensive testing, there's so many variances in size and weight that it's hard to tell what's a, um, fake and what's not. Someone even sent me a link to a YouTube video where someone <clears throat> cut one of these open and it looked real, like he was really cutting one open. And it had sand inside so it was halfway filled with sand with the idea they were trying to duplicate the weight of a real one but it the capacity since it was much smaller was a lot less now i'm too cumbersome i'm not going to even try to cut one of these open so i'm not going to do that test so <clears throat> now the other thing is i got lots of information it just you have to treat all of it with a grain of salt. I noticed that on these, the ones that I got real cheap, less than $5 a piece, they're marked TR18650. This one, this one, this one came with my Texan PL880. And it looks identical. Now, I would say the font is a little different. Uh, see if anything else is up. But the obvious difference is it says LC18650. Three, same um, 3,000 milliamp hours. Now, 
the writing on the back, and let me just see if I can get the camera to focus in for a second. The writing on the back is quite a bit different. This is the one from the PL880, and this is the cheapo one. Quite a bit different writing. So even though they both say H, <laughs> they both say Ultrafire, and let's see if they spell it the same. Yeah, um, there are slight differences, which is another indication that these, the six of these that I've got, are probably some kind of fake. And so far, the testing is is proven that they're not very good. Now, I will I will do a test of this one, and I gotta keep it separate so I don't get it mixed in. Although it's it's different than these other six are totally different in a couple of places like I showed you than than this one. So I will test that one later and see what the capacity of that one is. And if the capacity of this one is good, reasonable, then I will continue to use it in my Texan PL880 shortwave radio. If it's not, then I'll put one of these Nikors in there and Probably if if my after I finish the testing um, and I might do another video with the final results and I may not um, if all these ultra fire fires the six plus the gray turn out to have very low capacity I'm just going to chuck them because that that potential potentially means they are fakes and that potentially means they could damage the equipment you put them in. Now, speaking of putting them in, turns out that even though these Nikkor batteries are larger than the Ultrafire, they fit in the charger fine. As far, the charger can actually take something a little larger. They did fit in this case, but very snug. And they fit in my flashlights with no problem. And I would suspect that they would fit in my uh, PL880 with no problem. So it's only, the only problem I had was with these cheapo, these are like $2 a piece, power bank cases, reusable power bank cases. They, are, they were apparently designed to use these Chinese versions of the batteries. And uh, so, so that that's kind of the results of that. So, again, I'm not very proud of the testing. I'm going to continue to do a little more testing, but I'm kind of lost my enthusiasm based on my kludge setup and based on the fact that that there's a website that's got tons of information, and he's done extensive testing with professional equipment. So anyway, if you enjoyed this show, <laughs> oh well, yeah, you can give me a thumbs up if you did. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.